One of you recently commented on a video that I made and said that I should check out The Word Nerd, which is um, a channel. She, her channel is wonderful. Please go check it out and subscribe. But um, she has a video on verse mapping. And they were saying that my way of Bible studying is very closely related to verse mapping and pointed me into the direction of The Word Nerd's uh, channel and suggested that I watch their, her video. I watched her video, I love it. So I'm gonna do a video today there are four steps to verse mapping. The first is prayer, then observation, interpretation, and application. Um, have your heart ready to receive what God, whatever it is that God is going to tell you and just to receive the word. And then the second step is observation, which is basically taking the scripture that you're going to study and try to find out some more context. We're actually going to verse map mode of my favorite scriptures today, Matthew chapter six, verse 33. So over here, we're just going to write about the background. For the, and so for the background, we want to know who the author is, who are the recipients, what is the literary style, and when was it written? The author is Matthew. It was written to the Jewish people at the time that it was written, but also just believers in general. Literary style is a narrative, and it was written, they believe, somewhere between 80 and 90. And next is something that I do a lot, which is defining words. In particular, any words that I don't know or just words that stick out to me and the meanings of places as well. Matthew 6, 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So to me, the words that I want to kind of think about is seek, that's the first word because seek, that's it's telling us to do something, seek first. And the other word that I wanted to find is righteousness. So this is the part where I did do it a little bit differently, and I'll show you why in a little bit. Next, we're gonna take a look at context, which is vital for understanding, obviously, <laughs> what it is that the word is saying. And Matthew chapter six, well, Matthew chapters five through seven is actually part of uh, the Sermon on the Mount. And the Sermon on the Mount are a set of chapters, and it's when Jesus sat down and he spoke to the people that were crowded around him. It's at the beginning of his ministry and it was after he was baptized and he had fasted in the wilderness and he begins to teach. And I've done a few videos on the Sermon on the Mount so far. Um, check it out if you would like to. Next are cross references. And these can be just scriptures that you think of while you're studying this verse. And that could be, you know, anything that you can think of or you could even Google Sometimes I'm reading and studying the Bible and I think of another verse, and so this would be a great place to write that down. Next, we're gonna take a look at truths, and that could be exactly what it is, anything that's true about that verse. You can also journal any um, kind of thoughts or feelings and questions. You can just basically write what's on your heart. So I'm just gonna read it over and just write some truths here. So I just wrote, seek God first, not after I tried it my way. All these things, and that's what the verse says, um, all these things shall be given unto you. So all of these things are necessities. And if you go back a few verses and just read the verses prior to Matthew 6, 33, you'll see that um, you know the word is talking about not worrying. Jesus was talking and teaching to the crowd about worry and you know having you know food to eat and clothes to wear. Um, and so, and then after he talks about that, then he goes into Matthew um, 6.33, which is seek first the righteousness of God and all these things will be given to you as well.
So for interpretation, I wrote, placing God first in my life means allowing him to take care of my every need. I only have to focus on one thing, God. God calls us to put him first and love others. And that kind of makes me think, you know, when I'm selfish, the more selfish we are, um, the more we focus on our own needs, the less we're focusing on God and actually our needs won't be met as beautifully as if we are not selfish and focus on the Lord and putting God first. And he does call us to love others. So selfishness actually doesn't lead to us having more and providing for ourselves, but rather focusing on God does. And this is where I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I want to creatively journal the scripture and also write the application, which is the last step. The application step, um, we are just encouraged to journal any action, actionable steps that we can take to implement this scripture into our lives. Maybe we have certain thought patterns that we really need to align with God. Also prayer, I am a huge proponent for journaling prayer. So basically, how are you going to apply this truth to your life? And I wanna integrate that all in one with creative journaling and writing out the scripture here. And so here I just wrote a prayer and I will write some application and just journal some things about how I feel about this scripture. But basically this was how I verse map. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments or, you know, just let me know in the comments what kind of content you would like to see if you'd like me to do um, kind of like walking through different types of scriptures in this way. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, share this video with a friend and like it or dislike it if you didn't like it. That's okay. I post a new Bible study video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I can't wait to study the Bible with you again.